Joining us like he does every week at this time is Dave Zangaro on the Comcast Business Highlight. I have in front of me his story, how a special confidence boost helped Saquon Barkley reach the next level. How are you today, Dave? I'm doing well. How are you? Doing pretty well. Before I ask you about your latest article that uh, was really good about uh, Saquon Barkley, who was the man of the hour, I got to ask you about what happened with, with Nick Sirianni today. Now, obviously, when they set a rest day for Jalen Hurts, none of us really believed it. We just assumed that if he's going to practice, uh, if he's still going to play in the games, it's not the biggest deal in the world as long as he's a full participant that's going to play in the games and isn't hampered, and he didn't appear hampered visually against Jacksonville. But then today he slips up and goes, well, you know, it was an ankle on the injury report, which it wasn't. It was rest. And then he has to kind of backtrack. What do you make of what happened during that press conference, Dave? Yeah, oops. Uh, that's what that was. Um, clearly, there is an ankle injury. Uh, they weren't going to list it on the injury report, which, you know, I think their response to that would be something along the lines of this deep in the season, guys are dealing with injuries. It will be surprising if, if a player who touches the ball in every play wasn't banged up or a body part wasn't a little bit injured. Uh, obviously, the optics aren't great. Uh, it, it's going to raise a red flag, and I'd imagine it's something the league will now take a look at. But uh, as far as the actual injury to Jalen Hurst, I don't think it's anything serious. We're watching him kind of move around today. Uh, it's something to monitor, certainly, going forward as they play two games in five days. But uh, it doesn't seem to be anything that's really hampering him. Uh, obviously, from the the optics perspective, it's not great uh, when it looks like a team is trying to conceal an injury, but uh, I think he kind of threw it in the category of Nick Sirianni made a little mistake today. Uh, ultimately, I, I don't think the quarterback is very injured. All right, talk a little bit about a uh, the confidence boost that Saquon Barkley uh, got to get to his next level, as you write about. Yeah, it, it's really interesting because you, you think about a guy like Saquon who was the number two overall pick, who has been a pro bowler, who has done all these amazing things in the league, uh, and, and you're like, well, why would he ever need a confidence boost? But he had been through some things uh, with the, the end of his career with the Giants when they franchise tagged him and let him walk, and then the whole saga kind of plays out on hard knocks. So it was a really cool moment between him and Jamal Singleton, uh, who's the, the running back's coach, uh, just before the season started, he pulled him into the running back's room and just told him that, you know, Barkley's the, the highest graded, highest rated player he's ever scouted. Uh, and he still believes him and still thinks he can do this. And they talked about all the special things they could do together. And it was something that, you know, Singleton at the time didn't really know if it mattered, if, if Saquon needed that. He thought maybe he did. Uh, and talking to Barkley this week, it, he said it's a, a conversation. Uh, that he'll never forget. It, it was something that was really important to him, and it, it's kind of cool to see a, at this point in his career that he's found this coach that uh, means so much to him, and it, it's really made this chapter of his career that much better. You know, Dave, uh, it, it's funny. When I was reading the story, I, I think it about it's kind of related to the incident with Joel Embiid as well. Um, you've been around these uh, athletes, and you know a lot of, and you're a journalist, so you get to meet the people, and a lot of times. Fans, I think, a lot of times look at athletes like they're pro athletes, like they're superhuman. I think this was another reminder that even though you mentioned high draft pick, was great at Penn State. He has had a lot of accolades, just got a pretty damn good contract, but he's still kind of a human being. And could you just talk about that a little bit? Because it just seemed like, once again, even though Saquon is special, he kind of still needed a reminder like another, like any other human needs once in a while. Yeah, honestly, within the last, you know, five or ten years, I've become kind of fascinated by sports psychology. And it's, it's a really big thing. The Eagles, um, will have sports psychologists talk to some players. Some players will seek it on their own. Uh, because these are like high pressure situations and there's so much riding on all these games and these moments. Uh, specifically with Saquon Barkley, he was telling me he's reading a book right now about the importance of positive and constructive criticism versus really negative criticism. He said it's kind of like natural for a lot of athletes to be their biggest critics. And, and while that can be a good thing, there's also a benefit in some positive reinforcement. And I think he's learning that a little bit that, yeah, you can be tougher on yourself and that's going to help you get better. But there also has to be a moment where you build yourself up uh, and you play with confidence because I think the best players do have confidence and they, 
they exude that, and I think it helps him on the field. And I think he's one of those guys that when he feels that, he kind of gets it cooking. I don't think you can make a play like he made on Sunday if you're not really confident. Dave, when you look at Dallas uh, this weekend, obviously no Dak Prescott. What do they bring offensively that may give some problems to the Eagles defensively? Yeah, well, obviously without Dak, this game does lose a little bit of juice. No way around that. Uh, Cooper Rush has been around for a long time, though. Kind of an unusual situation. He's been with Dallas since 2017. You don't see backup quarterbacks stick with the same team that long. So they obviously trust him. Uh, I think it's going to be a little bit more of a limited game plan. Uh, they have C.D. Lamb, who's still a really good player. It looks like he's going to play in this game. Uh, an injury to watch, though, on the Dallas side of things, uh, Tyler Guyton, their rookie left tackle, I already had that circled as something to watch in this game. He's kind of been a little shaky. He was a raw prospect coming out of Oklahoma. Well, he might miss this game. He's a little banged up. So if that's the case, when the Eagles are on defense, I think they can get to – Cooper Rush a little bit that way because they haven't run the football very well either. So uh, it's kind of a recipe to really get after the quarterback. They can't run the football. Um, they have a backup quarterback. If you can't get pressure in this game, uh, you know, it'd be a little concerning. So I think that's one thing. And then on the defensive side for the Cowboys, it does look like Micah Parsons is going to play in this game. He's listed as questionable, but it seems like all indications are that he's going to play. Uh, even if he's not 100%, he's someone you have to worry about on every single snap because they will line him up all over the formation. And in this game, I'd imagine it's going to be a lot of Micah Parsons versus Fred Johnson, who's also a little banged up, the left tackle who's been filling in for Jordan Mailata. He got kind of a cheap uh, cut block uh, on that touchdown on Sunday. So he's been playing with a a knee brace all week. I'd imagine he's going to have to play with that in the game. So another matchup on the trenches to watch out for. Absolutely. Speaking with Dave Zangaro, he does a tremendous job covering the Eagles for NBC Sports Philadelphia. On the offensive side of the ball, Dallas got it back. Um, Calcaterra has played well, and, and and I know it's probably further down on the totem pole with A.J. Brown back, Devontae Smith's going to go, Saquon Barkley, as you wrote about. But we haven't seen a lot of that double tight end thing, really, I guess, since Ertz has been here. Is there a possibility since Calcaterra now has shown a little bit and we've got her back that we see just a little bit of that because it feels like something that they maybe can do across the middle of the field now that maybe they didn't feel comfortable doing a few weeks ago. Yeah, I mean, I think they can do a little bit of it. it honestly, it's just hard to look at all those guys you just mentioned. All of them, by the way, are going to play. Dallas Goddard, Devontae Smith, and, and A.J. Brown. You have all three of those guys, and you have Saquon Barkley. It's, it's just tough to find uh, the targets for Grant Calcaterra. Um, so I, I think that here and there, he will get an opportunity, but I don't think it's going to be near as heavy a workload as we've seen. Now, they, they have run a lot of two tight end sets, uh, and in this game, we'll see if Ben Van Sumering can play. He's kind of been playing that fullback role for them. He's coming back from a concussion, so uh, if they don't have that package in, maybe there's a little bit more 12 personnel with the two tight end out there. I could see a little bit of that, but the kind of weird thing about that is in, in recent years when they've gone to their 12 personnel is that they've had Jack Stoll out there who's kind of known more as a, as a blocker first type of player, well, while Calcaterra has improved in that element, that's not really his thing. So uh, the 12 personnel might look a little different um, going forward than it has in previous years. All right, Dave, as you know, we, we throw out these uh, polls uh, before our show. And I got to ask you, what unit, the offense or the defense, is going to have a bigger game against the Cowboys? Hmm, that's a good one. I think the defense. Uh, and it's a little uh, in their favor in this game without the starting quarterback for the Cowboys. But you know, good defenses beat up on backup quarterbacks. Good defenses are able to kind of uh, get the blood in the water and attack. And I, I think this is a really good defense right now. And it's not like they're, they're going to be great every single week. They're still so young. But I've been so impressed by these guys. Uh, really, every single uh, level of this defense has been impressive to me. I never thought at the beginning of this year we'd be talking about how good the linebackers are. Like week in and week out, we're talking about the linebackers making plays. I thought Sunday was the, one, of, one of the best linebacker games I've seen since I've been covering this team. So uh, I've been so impressed by them, and now they get to face the backup quarterback. So uh, I'd pick the defense in that poll. Well, Dave, we appreciate the time. Uh, safe travels out to Dallas. And um, I tell you what, it did a quick turnaround. If they could somehow, we were talking about this, Looking ahead a little bit, obviously the team can't. If they have a good six days, 
and get to eight and two and three and zero in the division. At that point, I feel like we now have to at least consider that the sky's the limit for this football team. Yeah, and that's if you're not there already. I mean, because yeah. this is a talented roster, and you know there have been a lot of games where they just haven't put it together. But I, I think we all know how, where the talent is, and you look at the NFC; it feels really wide open. Yeah, it just feels like there's a lot of possibilities that maybe we didn't think about a month ago. Thanks so much, Dave. We appreciate it, man. We'll talk to you next week. All right, guys. Sounds good. All right. That was Dave's Hangar on the Comcast Business Hotline.